Well, good evening. Good evening. Hey, you guys ready for the night? Welcome. Uh, 31 nights. This is night what? Come on. Talk to me. It's 19. It's 19. Yes. All right. Talk to me. 19. Okay. You guys um, are keeping up well. Uh, and it's good to see that you are expressing yourself through all uh, the points in your life, whatever you meet every day, decisions you're making by wisdom. Uh, and we are going to continue tonight to help increase your faith the more and more and more yeah. uh, as we continue to talk about uh, the men and women uh, from Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation, uh, God dealing with humanity and the wicked and the righteous teachings that we have so that we may have a greater understanding and accept the wisdom of God that comes to us, which God gives to us freely. It's available for everybody. Amen. Yeah. Here's my lovely wife. She might want to introduce herself tonight. I don't know. She seems like she's already primed the pump to go through these lessons, of, yeah, uh, these are. definitions. So, I've you know. Had previous lessons. <laughs> previous information. Good night. Good evening, Good everybody. Evening. Welcome again. God bless. I'm just going to read these definitions really fast so we can get into the lesson for tonight. Definition of wisdom. Wisdom is accumulated learning that is able to discern inequalities by wide, wise attitude which mm -hmm. challenges that which has been learned, accepted. Wisdom gives us the privilege to recognize both good and bad activity, truth yes. or lies, practical or eternal lessons. Study the parables of Jesus. Yes. The two main themes surrounding a life of wisdom are the lessons about God and humanity yes. and the lessons that deal with the righteous and the wicked. Get that. To lack understanding of these two themes will cause you to miss the entire message of the Bible. It's all about relationships. Wisdom gives us directional arrows as a roadmap to the treasures of God. Locate and follow the action verbs. Yes. These directional arrows, like the natural directional arrows from DMV, can save your life and at the same Ooh. time protect others, which means it saves their life as well. You're your brother's keeper. Yes. Regulatory <laughs> signs, warning signs, and temporary traffic control signs are all listed in Scripture. These lessons on wisdom will open up doors for us to receive the knowledge of the secret things of God as we read the Word of God, study the Word of God, meditate on the Word of God, memorize the Word of God, and share the Word of God with others. Yes. As we said before, these lessons were established before the foundations of the earth according to Deuteronomy 29.29. 29. This revelation reveals that there are still things to be seen that have not been seen, yes. heard that have not been heard, and waiting to be done that and have not been done. done. And tonight we will continue with the surrender of one. She was rolling, wasn't she? Uh, you know, when I was in school, I was a very fast reader, so I know I can read fast. She was fast. rolling. I hope you guys but had your horses to running say, tonight. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> but since you you've guys... been down this road before, ah. everything I'm saying, you're saying, yes, that's it. Okay, unless okay, you're, okay. Unless this is your first time. <laughs> then you All have right? to repeat, <laughs> rewind. All right. So we're going to get into surrender of one. And when we're talking about surrender of one, uh, as we said last night when we were at, at the ministry facility, we're talking about the individuals that we see, all right, that God used to uh, change the lives of thousands and millions of people, yes. okay? And, uh, and he'll do the same through you, okay? Amen. You're very special to the Lord God, okay? And so these particular pictures are, again, revelations of wisdom, Amen. Okay, that God has been revealing to us through uh, the Logos word and even through now callings, which is the Rhema word. The Holy Spirit brings men and women into particular positions in the body of Christ to work and do specific things. Okay, and so we want to make sure that you understand how special you are to God. This yes. is why this part of wisdom is crying out to you because wisdom from above, the power of God and the, and the wisdom of God, Christ Jesus, you have to understand if wisdom is crying to you, something very special about you, mm -hmm. something very special that God wants to get your life involved in, yes. okay? And so this is why we're doing this particular lesson on the surrendered one, okay? Uh, absolutely you, all right? Absolutely. God is not respect of persons. Absolutely you. Amen. The more you know about it, the more you can position yourself, all right? It's like going to a shopping center. You got that big truck, don't try to park into a little teeny parking spot, okay? <laughs> so if you know the spots are small at the shopping center, then drive your other car, vehicle, or something, but don't try to park so that nobody can get open the door open. You can't do open the door either. Unless you want to sure. exercise, Unless... then you just go all the way to the end of the <laughs> go, yes. Find you a parking spot that can fit you, all right? That's right. All right. Now, let's get into some, some wisdom notes that I did not read last night to you guys, okay, because I was trying to get through it real quick. Uh, and here's the first one. 
uh, and you can hear this and you know you can go back to the videos and over and over and over as much as you want wisdom and understanding okay remember uh, Proverbs it says wisdom is a principal thing and get understanding mm -hmm. okay wisdom and understanding has always been the key to unlocking doors to great miracles Still both that's right. okay wisdom and understanding you can't use something if you don't understand it that's and this right. is why understanding is so important with wisdom because it helps you to apply wisdom in your life okay Properly, that's you know right. in the right way okay mm -hmm. so it unlocks great miracles and each circumstance becomes a stone all right for more victories in your life so each and every time you apply wisdom it helps build a next stone for you to step on Amen. so that you may continually walk in victory in life okay Amen. if you look at the life of jesus you'll see this over and over and over he healed uh you know uh Jairus's, a little girl who had only been dead for a few hours the widow of nain's son who probably had been passed for a day or so and then lazarus who was what in the grave for four days when he got mm -hmm. there you see the progression Okay, and this is what wisdom carries us to. And the next progression of Jesus is what? Is all of us. <laughs> all right? So you see the progression. This is what the stepping stones do, okay, to help you get to greater levels of knowledge and understanding with God. Wisdom helps us to also create a drawing room in our minds, okay, uh, where pictures of tomorrow's life, okay, uh, begin to unfold, okay? You can read Acts chapter 10. Uh, where it talks about Peter standing on the roof and, you know, and the vision coming. Okay. But then after that, the Holy Spirit instructs him, okay? You can read that in verse 19 and 20. The Holy Spirit instructs him to follow the guys, okay? Tomorrow is unfolding, see, to Peter. And it'll unfold to you also, okay? Amen. It'll unfold to you, all right? So, um, and we read last night about, you know, in Philippians, about how wisdom helps you to concentrate on one goal and get that done and avoid the distractions and things. We talked about that last night, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, here's another point, something to throw at you guys uh, about wisdom. Uh, scripture has shown us that what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you, all right? Even it shall be given unto okay? you. Okay, mm -hmm. in Job chapter 42, verse 10, it says, when Job prayed for his friends, all right, his captivity, his captivity was, was turned, turned. okay? Right. How do God. you pray for someone else's you know, forgiveness or sins or whatever they've gone through, you know, because if God told him, said, you, go, you better get Job to pray for you. <laughs> how, do you. How do you do that? How do you make something happen for somebody else? Well, you have to have a surrendered life. You have to be dead to yourself, That's okay? Right. Especially when you believe or think or imagine or, or something that somebody has done something to you, okay? And then you have to pray for them. How do you do that and pray wholeheartedly through love and faith, all right? <laughs> you have to have died to self, okay? Yes. You must have died to self. And we, we may talk about that a little bit if we get, get over there, okay? So Job prayed for his friends, his captivity was turned. And under the law of events, okay, and this is very special in everything that we're doing, under the law of events, a God connection can deliver millions of people, change the course of history, okay? And even recognize that adversity has advantages. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to Okay. Yeah. This is what wisdom teaches us, all right? That adversity has advantages, okay? Adversity reveals by the power of wisdom, because we're talking about wisdom, who is the power of God, all right? Uh, Jesus Christ. It, it reveals the depth of your friendships. It reveals the depth of what you believe, all right? It's going to take you to what you believe, I can tell you that, all right? Yes, it is. And the depth of your pursuit of more, whether it's more wisdom, wisdom, whether it's more resources, whether it's more service, whatever, but it will carry you to that. Adversity helps you to, to get into a place where you can see how you can do more, okay? Always has, you know, before the, before the train came, men were, were riding in uh, stagecoaches, okay? The adversity of bumping up and down, carrying a little bit of luggage, uh, attacks from robbers and all those things, all of that adversity calls, guess what? new inventions, new things to come forth, you know, right. all these things. And so adversity has its advantages, but you've got to know that. And the, you can only know that through wisdom. Wisdom is the only thing that's going to reveal that this is coming at you is to your advantage. This is going to make something happen. What about this is going to open up this door or it's going to show you this picture, okay? Peter had never gone and eat with uh, uh, Gentiles, 
okay, until the Lord showed him, Peter, and that boy, what did the first thing he said to the Lord? I never did that before. He was talking to the Lord. I ain't doing, I'm nothing, nothing like that has ever come into my lips. I'm not going to do this, you know, eat like this and whatever. That, that adversity, it changed him to see greater things, okay? And this is what we always have to know about, uh, about uh, walking in, in wisdom, okay? Now, tonight we're going to look at, last night we'll look at Acts chapter 2, uh, and we looked at Samuel with David, you know, uh, in Goliath, okay, and how David moved when he challenged, when Goliath sent out the challenge, David went and challenged him, and that freed up Israel, all right? Uh, in Acts chapter 2, we see Peter preach, and it freed up thousands and thousands and thousands of Jews to the point that, you know, uh, many, many, many thousands got saved, but how many left went left and went back home thinking about it, what had That's happened, right. and right. still got saved, or, you know, back at home or whatever, you know, by, by, by the by the word that they heard, okay? Tonight we're going into this directional arrow. It's in chapter 9 of the book of Acts, okay? Acts chapter 9, okay? In Acts chapter 9, you there? To read. Oh, there. well, the whole, the whole chapter, the whole, 12. yeah, the whole chapter is about, is about, you know, Saul going to uh, Tarshish. Okay. I mean, Saul going to uh, Samaria. All right. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest <laughs> and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Mm. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and he heard a voice wow. saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Yes. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, uh, what wilt thou have me to do? Huh. And the Lord said, Arise, trembling. said unto him, Arise and go unto the city, and thou it shall be told thee what thou should, must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul <laughs> arose from the earth, and when his <laughs> eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Mm. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Glad and he was to certain. Him, and the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, yes. and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed, mm. and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And what, what, what did Paul do? He was seeing. What was he seeing? He was seeing his tomorrow. Okay. Now, you and I have to understand that being raised as a Pharisee, okay, uh, Paul was a very intelligent person. Yes, he when was. When it came to scriptures. He was a Okay, the old, the, old, the old law and uh, those things that were contained in it. He was a very smart person. He, he was very wise in, in, in the things that he believed in. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he was very uh, committed to the things that You're he believed in so. because <laughs> guess what? He he would he, anybody that was of the way, he would he would either bring them to jail or he watched them stone. Okay, it didn't matter to him as long as he got rid of them because mm -hmm. his commitment was to what he believed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is again, this is why God used him because of his commitment to he believed what. He believed. He lived he what he believed. Yes, he and, did. And That's so good. God used him in a way to change a lot of the things about the church, as I'm going to reveal to you guys in a moment. But you have to look at him and go like, this was his character before. And after this event, then his character totally changes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Totally changes. And this is why, you know, we tell you guys all the time, you know, when a man or woman says that they belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, there should be some fruits unto repentance. Okay? And repentance is not sorry. No. Repentance is change. Yes, it is. Okay? Yes, it sorry is. is an emotional uh, effect. That's but right. repentance is change. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so it should be there. So these are some things that Paul did. And we're talking about, again, people that surrendered to the Lord. And when they surrendered... As it is written in Romans, we read Romans chapter 5 last night, verse 19. By one man's sins, many were, many were led away to destruction, became sinners. But by one man's obedience, many have been saved unto righteousness. That's you and I, okay? By Adam's fall, 
by Jesus obey, obeying and going to the cross, even to the death of his cross. So you and I, now we look at all of these other characters through the word of God, and we look at them through the eyes of faith. And we see how God used them and how they were, how they accepted what God wanted to be done. Paul laid there on the ground and he says, what do you want me to do, Lord? Mm -hmm. That means he surrendered to God right there. Totally he says, what do you want me to do? Not what I want to do, okay? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to do, okay? And so Paul died. He had three days to die to himself. He was blind. So he died to himself for three days, all right? Mm -hmm. This is what Paul did when he surrendered obediently to the Lord. He rewrote the history of the church. All right? Two-thirds of the New Testament is written by Paul. And maybe a little more than that. Okay? We know it but we so know much. that much. He rewrote the history of the church. Okay? So you know he changed. You know he changed. He yeah, because he didn't like anybody that was of the way. That's okay? right. All right? He became of the way. He became, the, <laughs> yeah, he became part of the way. All right? He also gave guidelines through revelations. He says, all of these revelations that he got, this is why he had a thorn in the side and stuff, because the revelations were coming to him, and it was causing a, a, a rewriting of, of church history, okay? Making things come out just from the Jewish side of church into now the open side where God who opened up the veil and came out to everyone, all right? So now he's rewriting things, okay, by these revelations. Remember what Jesus told his disciples? He says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against what? My revelation knowledge, okay? My revelation knowledge, all right? Not only did Paul rewrite the history of the church and give the guidelines through uh, revelation knowledge, but he ordered the established holiness of the church. He ordered that holiness in every, in every writing that he wrote. He wrote to, for people to love the Lord God with all their heart and to, and to get rid of themselves, die to yourself, you know, in your flesh and whatever. And he wrote about the things of the Holy Spirit and, you know, and how we ought to be led by the Holy Spirit and not walk into the things of darkness, but follow the things of the kingdom of God. He wrote all these things. And then he also wrote about eradicating the enemy in Ephesians chapter 6. Hmm. What did he say? Finally, my brethren, be strong, all right? be the strong in the Lord. Put on the whole arm of God, his might. you know, mm -hmm. and he talked and he talked about that. So so he taught these particular things. He brought these things to the church. OK, and so we can see how his surrender, how many lives have been saved because of Paul's surrender to God. Not just in the Jewish communities, but there you go, because all of us who are who are walking and we follow these the, the revelations yes. of the Gospels, you, we follow those letters that he wrote. We live these things. We are the ones who now take the word of God and reveal and make Jesus real. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that he can do what he said he would do. All right. We That's make right. him real because right. of the writings of Paul. Okay. And so it's very important for you to understand. This is why I'm telling you, you do not understand how important you are to God because God can help you rewrite your family's history. He can help you rewrite a business uh, history, anything. He can recreate things. He can even give you a creation or, or bring something that's never been forth. Bring it right to you because you're so special to him. Yes, but that specialty you, is based on, again, how we surrender to the Lord God. See, yes. how we do that. Okay? Amen. You guys with me tonight? Amen. All right. Now, we're reading these directional arrows. So, we're going to go to another one. And this is one. This one is over in the book of Esther, chapter 7. Okay? We want to go over here and look at, look at Esther. All right, because not only did uh, the Lord God use a lot of men, he used a lot of women all through the word of God. I mean, you look at the, the ladies that ministered to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Look at all the stuff that they did and things that we don't even know about That's right. that was did by them who supported him. Some of those women were, were rich women because they had rich families. They were, they were from rich families, and they, they supported him, you know. And so you, you never know. I mean, it's just a thing of they surrender, you surrender. You know, when we all surrender, guess what? We're all going out of here, all right? All right? In the book of Esther, chapter 7, all right? Um, now, this is, this is, this is good. I, I got to get over here myself. You want to read down through from verse 6? No. No. You can read the whole thing. Go right on. We got, we got a little bit of time. So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day of the banquet of wine, yes. What is thy petition, Queen Esther? Yes. And it shall be granted thee. Oh. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom. Woo. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, 
And if it please the king, let my life be given at my petition and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain and to perish. Mm. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king, Esaras, answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he, and where is he, that does presume in his uh -oh. heart to do so? Uh -oh. And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then oh. Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And this king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into his palace garden, and Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden to the place of the banquet of wine, uh -oh. and Haman was fell upon the bed whereupon <laughs> Esther was. Look at God. Then the king said, Will he force himself, force the queen also before me in the house? And the word went out of the king's mouth. They covered Haman's face. And, Har and Harbona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows, 50, cubics. 50 cubics high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang, Hang him, him there on. <laughs> so they hanged Ham Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath pacified. I'll tell you something that I've always gotten out of that story. When you dig a, when you uh, make a gallow, you better oh make boy. one your size. Yes, or when you dig a ditch, yes, you better dig your size because you're yes, the one that's going to have to lay in it. Yes, sir. You <laughs> we see that right here. Yeah, I'm telling you right now. You will, oh, notice, you will notice in verse 9 that whenever there's a challenge going forth and whenever <laughs> something is about to take place to bring forth good to you, somebody's going to speak up on your behalf that has never spoken up before. Praise you know, God. somebody's going to do that, all right? Now, we go to Esther, and we look at Esther. And remember, Mordecai had already shared with Esther that perhaps that she was born for such a time as this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yes. Same thing about you, yes. all right? You've been born for such a time, such as, a this, time as this, okay? But you have to hear somebody say it. It's all, it all has to do with purpose, okay? You, has to, you have to hear somebody say things, words, okay, uh, because... You know, when man fell away from God, you know what he took in? Words. Mm -hmm. He took in words. And, and, and you notice that man relies on words more so than he relies on God speaking to him. Every day do we do anything, words. And this is why words are so powerful because God came down and uh, he just uh, separated Babel because, and he showed him, he says, well, you like words? I'm going to give you different languages. And he gave them, he gave them all. He gave them <laughs> words. And, uh, and then that brought men to a place where, uh, you know, they couldn't at that moment depend on the same word all the time. So everybody was separated. God works through his system to bring us mm -hmm. to a revelations of how good he desires to be toward us. Amen. Okay. In Esther's case here, okay. Mordecai was a word to Esther, her uncle, told her, you, for such a, you, you, you got to understand who you are. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't miss out on who you are. Pre-adventure, here you are for such a time as this. Yes. You, you, you've been designed by God to mm -hmm. bring this change. That's something. Okay. This That's is good. powerful to you, you guys. So, yes. so her obedience for such a time as this changed the law of the king. Mm -hmm. I hope you're getting this. Mm -hmm. All right. Her obedience all right, she had to she had to surrender herself because she could have died going in there yes. to the king. Okay, again getting rid of self. Mm -hmm. All right, and and she goes she's in. About somebody else. That's right. She's mm -hmm. thinking about all of her people, mm -hmm. not not herself. Yes. You know, and there's yes. so much of that stuff going on today that and it almost make you sick. But she thought about everybody else, not herself. You know, and and put herself in the place of. I, I live or die, Lord, I'm going to do this because this is going to free other people. If I don't, they're going to surely die because mm -hmm. the, the rule has already been, been set forth that they are going to die. Wickedness mm -hmm. wants to get rid of God's people always, mm -hmm. all right? But you know this, what this proves, Apostle? Hmm? The heart of the king is in the hand of the, the Lord, Lord always. and he can turn it whichever right? way he will, and that's yep. what he did for Esther. Yep. And her so people. her obedience reversed the loss of millions of lives. What would your obedience bring forth, all right? The loss of millions of lives, mm -hmm. and it removed the hidden enemy at That's the same true. time. That's powerful. All right? Her obedience, all right? She didn't care about her life. She cared about the millions of lives that were mm -hmm. going to be lost, mm -hmm. okay? 
But at the same time, when she stood up for her, for her people, all right, for other people, all right, God got rid of the hidden enemy at the same time. Mm, that's powerful. All right, and that's the thing that moves you with wisdom, how God works to do things to show you that when wisdom said that it cries out, it will reward you if you cry back to it and say, come to me. It will happen like that, okay? This is all we're talking about is that when you accept and say, you know something, I'm going to surrender obedience to the Lord God because, you know, self, you know, this, that scripture that my wife reads all the time, she always quotes it in Galatians, Galatians 2.20, you know, it's always about dying to self. And the same Paul that we just read about, okay, the same Paul that we just read about over in the book of Acts who wrote all those things to the church, who ordered and established holiness in the church, who, who began to set up order in the church, uh, who, who, who spoke forth and said these are the things that follow suit in, in establishing sonship roles in the church and all that. He did a whole lot of things that you never see those other apostles did. He, did a, he established a whole lot of things in the church, okay? Yes, he, did. he did. But that same apostle said, you want to go to Galatians chapter in, the, in, the, in this one? In this one? Oh, Galatians the back. 2. Galatians 2. 2.20? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm crucified with yes, Christ? Yes, yes. Oh, I'm crucified she knows with Christ. It, see. She knows it. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, I live, you yet go not to I, it. but Christ liveth in me. Yes. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live it by the faith of the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. Amen. That's in my heart. That, that whole scripture there, mm -hmm. along with the one in Philippians chapter 2, verse, verse uh, 2 through 4, all right, it's talking about dethroning self, okay? Because if you're going to be that person that God's going to pour himself into to, to save thousands and millions of people and, and families and businesses and, and, you know, and cities and countries and whatever, you're going to have to be the person who dethrone yourself, get yourself out of the way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when I say dethrone yourself, I'm talking about yourself dying, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. to, to your will. Mm -hmm. All right, and living for the Lord's will. That's what that scripture that she always mm -hmm. quotes, mm -hmm. that's what it's talking about. Paul found that out, okay? You will find it out too. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you will find it out. We found, we found it out. out. You no will find it can, out. Yeah, you no will find out. There's no way you can be effective yep. doing nope. ministry. Nope. nope. Yeah, wow. Nope. So, so <laughs> let me give you some information about a dead self, okay? And that's you will good. see this through the scriptures, okay? You'll see this through the scriptures, but it's yes. something that I'm throwing to you that Esther had to go through, uh, Paul went through. Peter went through, you know Peter went through it big time, all right? Right in front of all the disciples, Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? <laughs> he got rid of Peter, all yes, of Peter's Lord, self. He de dethroned his whole self right there, right in front of everybody else, okay? All right? A dead self is not an imprisoned self, okay? It's not an imprisoned self. Some people imprison themselves, all right? And they and they and they are they're there all the time and they're struggling all the time and they don't like it, but they do it out of uh, some people do it out of loyalty. Well, I'm just doing this. Whatever. That's how Peter did with Jesus in the boat. Mm -hmm. All right, when he went out, then he, he said, found, then he said, the launch out into okay. the deep. That's what he did. He he imprisoned himself. You know, we toil all night, whatever, but nevertheless, set your word. That was just out of loyalty, you know, respect mm, or whatever. And some people, yeah, out of courtesy, they just hold within themselves, but inside them, that self man is just bubbling over we like a, you know, nothing. whatever, you know. That's what okay. he was thinking. <laughs> but a dead self is not an imprisoned self, okay? All right? An imprisoned self is more apt to do harm than good mm. because it's always stirred up, all right? And it's just waiting for a moment to be released. Okay, that's an imprisoned one. Mm. All right, it is not dead. It is not a dead self that men have fear of. See, if you're dead, I have no fear of you. No fear at all, because I know. Guess what? You're dead to yourself. You're gonna do all you can for the Lord. You ain't in it. All right, God's in it. <laughs> mm. God's in it to win it. <laughs> you ain't in it. All right. That's all right. He's all right. Yeah. <laughs> It's the captive, manipulated, and imprisoned self that one is to fear. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know when that one might explode. Mm -hmm. That one that's captive, he's waiting to get out. All right? He's manipulated, he's waiting to get out. You okay? Call phony baloney. That's right, phony baloney. <laughs> all right? He's imprisoned. He's an imprisoned self. And that's the one that you've got to fear. And that's why wisdom is so important. Because wisdom, again, 
helps you to discern those inner qualities, mm -hmm. all right, of people. Remember the definition of wisdom? It helps you to discern those inner qualities of men and women that you meet, mm -hmm. okay, so that you might know what you're dealing with, okay? Yes. All right? This kind of self is infinitely more self-centered, all right, than the self that's allowed to fully play its role out in men. Some people, you know that they're, guess what? They're self-centered, so it's better to let them just play their role out than to and cause one, it, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. than to cause one to be captivated with himself and hold himself in, knowing all the time that it's just one event that's going to cause him to blow up. Mm -hmm. And why is this like this? Why does Paul say many times over, and that scripture that my wife loves and she reads over and over, and we've lived it and you're going to live it one day, and you know, you might be you living might it today. It now, I'm sure. All right? Yeah. Why is it so important? It's because self never forgives iniquities. That's why it's got to be dead, not in prison. Because it will never get, forgive anything. All right? No matter what, it will always bring up what happened or this is that or whatever. Mm -hmm. It will never forgive or, and, and not remember things. And this is why people will find you different when they find you walking like this because you, you've died to self. And they wonder, how could you go through that and whatever? It's because they know they can't because they're not dead to self. <laughs> That's all it is. They That's know good. I could never do that That's because good. guess what? I, I'm, I'm dead to self. I'm still living. I'm still living. <laughs> you know, I'm still living. Okay. So you'll find that there's nothing that remembers injury. Okay. Because the only one injured. All right. The only one injured is the one that's the dead. Self and, you. Mm -hmm. and he's dead. All right. That's he's good. dead. When he's, he's dead, dead, he doesn't remember injury. He just keeps on going. All right. And so this is why Esther could do what she did. This is why Paul could live the way he did. No matter what happened, the, all the stripes that were put on, uh, you know, that he was beaten with rods, uh, thrown, shipwrecked, you know, uh, all the times he was in prison or whatever, he could go through all of that because it wasn't about him. It was about the Lord. That's it. Right? All right? He had died. He had really died. That's why he could write these scriptures and say, surrender, give yourself, you know, over the Lord, die daily. He says, I die daily. He was that's killing himself said. daily, and every that's what day. we all have to do. We have to do that, okay? And you have to do that if you're going to be used by God, all right? Because God is not going to take second place to nobody. And if self is there, again, the love of God is not there because the love of God always forgives. See, forgiveness goes with God because God is love. You can't separate the two. Okay, yes. you cannot separate the two. God is forgiveness. Yes, For God yes. so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God is forgiveness. Jesus is being nailed to the cross and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Forgiveness and God are just like this is one. That love of God and forgiveness is just like that. And so if there is self, self is not going to forgive. That means that there's, a, there's not a, a, a priority of God there. Okay, and so these men, Moses, Moses had to live this way, you know? He had, to, he had to give up self, all right, to go back to Egypt. You go back where you kill somebody and they remember you and everybody talked right. about it and whatever, right. you know you have to be dear to yourself to do that, to go back there, okay? And many of the saints that we see, that we read about in the, in the scriptures, and we just bought you some to help you to understand that wisdom will always pull out uh, these particular teachings to you to help you to, again, to challenge that which has been accepted. It's been accepted. Well, I'll give a person a piece of my mind. Well, why would they want a piece of your mind? You know, that kind of talk. It's been accepted, you know, that there were, I used to hear somebody years ago, he used to always say, well, everybody's got skeletons in their closet. Why would you want to accept that kind of, of talk to make you think that you can always sin and just live and keep on doing it and nobody can be free? That's, that's not the talk that the kingdom has. The kingdom has a faith talk. That That's says right. that our faith, it rests in what we believe in Christ Jesus. Yes. That even though we have not seen him, we believe in him mm -hmm. and we trust him with our lives. All right. He's a resurrector. We have been resurrected with him. Faith talk always talks about what's going on in the kingdom, Amen. not what's going on in the flesh. Amen. The and scripture so, that goes along. Go right on, dog. Uh, that you, that Philippians. Galatians, Philippians chapter 2. Yeah, chapter 2. Starting with verse two. 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'll give you a moment to get to Philippians 2. Yeah, great scripture. 
Starting with verse 2, it says, Fulfill ye my joy, yes. that you be like-minded, mm -hmm. having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Yes. Let nothing be done through strife or vain, vain glory, glory. Mm -mm. but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Yes. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Yes. Let this mind be, be in, in you, which was also, also in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Amen. And you can Amen. continue to read the rest of that, but oh, we yeah. just stopped it right there. Yep. So uh, this is, uh, again, lesson 19. Hey, we're going to 20 tomorrow night. And uh, every every lesson, like I said, I told you guys we, we came over the hill. We're going like this now. Amen. Because all of this is leading up to, to, to an exit, all right, <laughs> and an entrance, all right? And how you exit something is how you enter something, all right? And so we're heading up to a, a, a high time in the Lord Jesus Christ. Greater so, revelation yes. of wisdom. Yes. That's where we're headed. Amen. 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 Yes. So God bless you guys tonight. Thank you for being on with us, wherever you are tonight. You could be all around the world watching this. We don't know, but we're certainly happy that you would join us. Amen. And we pray that the things that we say, again, increasing your faith, but helping you also to understand the power of wisdom and understanding in your life, that Amen. you can be a very influential person for the kingdom of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Remember this always. All right? We make him real. Amen. And guess what he'll do? He'll do the works. But we have to make him real to people. Mm. Amen? Through our lives. God bless you. God bless you. We'll see you guys tomorrow hey. night. Same time, same word, same Holy Spirit. God bless you guys. Amen. Good night. Amen. Amen.